Buying the dip in Terra Luna. Why would we even consider such a strategy when over the long term the price is going up very nicely, right? I don't even know how big of a number that is if you look at the entire history here. This is definitely a very, very nice rise. So why would you try to time the market here? I think there's opportunity in dips because not everybody that sells during a crash like this, right, like here in May of last year, not everybody that sells over here wanted to sell. There is forced selling going on as well, or there's at least automated selling going on. So if you're betting on the Luna price appreciating and you've got some leverage, if you want to over anticipate, right, over participate. So if the price goes up by 10%, you will make 30%. If the price goes down by 10%, you will lose 30%. There are these kinds of instruments in the market when you are exposed to something like this and then we see a drop of say 40% and you've got a leverage of 3x, then you have to sell, right? The centralized exchange will liquidate you. It will take all of your money. And so this then will incur further selling, which might then in total lead to these more than 70% drops. And so that's one mechanism, right? We want to take advantage of something like this. If people have to sell, we want to buy the dip and make 80% in just a very short period of time. The other reason why people might be selling is simply because they are risk mitigating. For example, you might consider to set yourself a stop loss somewhere around here and then instruct your exchange to automatically sell whenever the price falls below a certain threshold. And so then we've simply got, again, cascading sales that continue to depress the prices and you want to buy those prices, right? You want to buy low and sell high. So there's opportunities in crashes. The issue though is we want to be systematic about about buying and selling those dips, right? You don't just want to buy the dip and see it further falling, buying the dip and just losing. Unless, right, this is now a very funny picture over here, but you could still have bought the dip and then just sold directly afterwards, right? A lot of these were actually opportunities, even in a chart like this. If you know when to sell, then even buying the dip in such a chart can make money. And I will go more into this in detail when we look at return charts such as this, right, where we buy the dip based on those mechanical rules, then you can even make money when the overall market, when the overall asset tends to decline. You simply have to sell quickly enough and you have to know when, historically speaking, the best time to sell is. And so what's important from my point of view is to have some kind of systematic approach over here, right? To stay in the driver's seat, not to be led by emotions and to simply just buy on a whim, but to have something predefined, a predefined set of of rules that historically worked well that you then want to use to hopefully perform positively for this in the future. Now, I personally, I like to use the RSI for this, right? So when we click here in trading view, we enter the relative strength index. We add this to the chart. I like to use this kind of indicator because it does work quite well historically for a lot of crypto assets. When we look, for example, at this chart over here, right? This duration, the lowest the RSI has been over here was also the lowest point in the price chart. So that's encouraging, right? You want to buy when when this RSI is low, you would have picked the best day in this example to get this dip to then afterwards profit from further growth, right? Those are the kinds of opportunities we look at. But what I think is important here is to see what kind of duration should we actually take. And this is where most people use the RSI, from my opinion, the wrong way. And I will try to illustrate this with an example. Here, look at this chart over here. I have removed now all of the labels on this chart, right? We don't have a price, we don't have a duration. And so I want you to kind of think, how long do you think is this chart actually? Is this chart showing maybe the price development of a single day? Does it show the price development of a week, of a month, of a year? What kind of price development do we see over here? What kind of duration? So that's chart number one. Let's now look at chart number two. So there we go. This is chart number two. Do you think this chart is longer or shorter in duration compared to the prior chart? If your answer is that the second chart is shorter in duration, then you are right. And I think you might have gotten this intuitively, right? I hope you picked the second chart. The reason why I think you could have picked that is because of the volatility. If we look at how much is the price moving, right? How much is it going up and down without a clear direction? We can see this on short timeframes. So there seems to be some kind of a mean over here 
a mean price, a reference point that people might have for what this asset might be worth. And then we're simply just overshooting and undershooting every now and then. When we look at a longer time horizon, so let me quickly show you here how long this is. This is the hourly chart and we are looking here at approximately four days of data. When we now zoom out and we look at this instead, we can see the fluctuations here, they are way more muted, right? They are way smaller and what actually tends to be the main driver of price is trend. It's trend, right? It goes up sometimes, it goes down sometimes, but it's not fluctuating that erratically compared to the very short period. And that's why I think when you buy the dip, it's probably best to use this RSI on the hourly time frame. So not to use it on the daily time frame because the daily time frame is mainly looking at several months of data, right? Where we have trends. But the overshooting and undershooting, it happens on shorter time periods. So when we look at the hourly chart, we get, I think, way more reliable trading signals. Here, let's look at this historically. Let's take a low value over here. Let's say we would take, say, something around 22 or so. Then we would have bought, for example, over here, right? A strong undershooting. Then we sell some time later, right? We don't really know yet. How long should we hold until we sell? In this case, it would have been 37 hours. Then we continue. Then we see here again a pretty low level and the price didn't appreciate that much afterwards, right? But it still appreciated somewhat, in this case, after 33 hours by 5%. And so it goes on. We can always buy during very depressed prices. And now the actual question is what kind of a threshold should one take, right? Should we already buy, say, when this hourly RSI is below 30? Should we wait until it goes below 20? And then when we do buy, how long should we potentially hold, right? What historically was the average duration for a recovery of the price after such a crash. And as always, I'm a fan of doing this systematically. If you so far enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe because I publish videos regularly. This was just a short clip. For the entire episode, click over here. It has got way more details. See you in that video. Bye.